Hello out there, all you Mixolodians. Thanks for joining the Fish Mix tonight. The chat room is filling up nice and quickly. Let's give a big shout out to DJ Jencat, who's joining us tonight. Jen, of course, from Belter Radio. We've got Mr. Ron Dady from Atlantica. April from Worth and Raleigh. We've got the great Juan from Gene Cabby and the Secret Admirers Society. Ketcha Dinyard. Carol Jackson, who just happens to be the mayor of Mixposure. Darren Holland from the Darren Holland Project. Starfish, tuning in from my living room. <laughs> and Katja T from Finland. We've got some great music in store tonight. In fact, I have a special segment, two segments actually, and a pre-recorded interview that I did with PMAD. PMAD, of course, released his debut album yesterday called Who, Why, Where, What? And uh, it's a fantastic record. So I have some conversation with PMAD and I'm going to spin a few tracks from the record and we're going to have a good load of fun tonight. So here we go. We're going to start out this set with some Rayon Verts with, with the uh, good old mayor of Mixposure participating in that one. Some Ron Bowes, some Atlantica, some Michael Olson, some Isamania or Isamania from Switzerland, great new band. Helen Counts, some Katja Dinard, and some Katja T. And then the first segment of my interview. So let's get going.
Tonight on Mexposure.com, on the Fish Mix, we have a very special guest in the house. P-Matt is joining us to tell us all about his debut album that he just released yesterday. Who, Why, Where, What is out in the world now, and it's available on all streaming and download platforms. And it's a beauty. Paul Dillon, a.k.a. P-Matt, is an Irish solo artist from County Galway in Ireland. And after stints in groups like the Suicidal Duffel Coats, Starve the Barber, and his current band, The Greeting, Paul set out to make his own music. So during the COVID pandemic, and with a little help from his friends around the world, 
He produced an 8-track album that also includes an additional four very cool remixes and an extended mix of the latest single called Sisters, and we're listening to that right now in the background, but we're going to hear that one in full later. P-Mount's music has been described as post-punk flavored goth rock, and I think that is pretty much spot on. My first brush with P-Mad's music was his debut single from the record, a song called Who Am I? That opening bass line and that bass tone, just awesome, hooked me instantly. But it's so much more than that, I think. In fact, I think at the time, I was thinking to myself, this is the kind of music I want to make, but I didn't. So let's have a listen to Who Am I first, and then we'll get into our chat with P-Mad. We'll always be there. I've heard that track, Who Am I, so many times now, all over online radio. But every time I hear it, it still sounds as fresh as the first time I heard it. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us tonight. I know that, uh, well, I'm guessing, of course, that things are a little crazy with you right now. Let's start with the uh, album title. What was the inspiration for naming the record Who, Why, Where, What? Is that a uh, an introspective reference of some kind? Hi, Michael, and all the fish mix. Thank you so much for having me. I'm absolutely delighted with uh, the response, as you say. Uh, you've heard it so many times. Um, so it was one thing worse than uh, being talked about. And probably it's uh, not being talked about. So <laughs> uh, to tell you the truth, I'm overwhelmed with uh, the response from yourself and so many others uh, to who, why, where, what, and the expectation 
uh, for PMAD and all the other bits and pieces. So maybe that's a little bit of uh, why uh, the, the name of the album is Who, Why, Where, What. It's a bit introspective. It's a, a bit uh, the curiosity of, of people, I suppose, uh, of us all. When you meet in a conversation with anyone for the first time, you want to know who, why, where, what. And, uh, and most people, most people, especially if you're Irish anyway, you, you, you like to go away knowing more about the person and uh, the story uh, than when you first started. And even when you do know someone, uh, you're asking their their uh, their stories and their family and their their gossips or whatever it is who why where what and then of course as you say the introspective side of it of uh, the internal grasp with yourself of who why where what am I doing myself where am I going who am I <laughs> the song I suppose it's basically um, that's that's the logic I suppose of what and then to really get down to the simple nuts and bolts of us when I was sitting down to say what's a good title for an album and you have Dead Day Infected and you have Floodland and Sisters of Mercy and you have You Too Boy and how simple all these things are and the bits and pieces and it was you know what makes a good title who'd like to hear it and then you just say so I wrote down you know as you do uh, a load of titles and I started off listing I'm a good lister and it was just like who why, where, what, 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 you know. So actually I just looked at it and said, isn't that actually a good title for the album in all fairness? Uh, so simple and all, that's 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 what it is. Uh, inspiration, I'm not so sure, but um, maybe it is. I suppose what is inspiration and how did the great ideas come together? Maybe that's it, I don't know. Uh, we'll see in time. History decides uh, what's good, bad and indifferent. And uh, maybe that's a new album title good, bad, and indifferent. So, Paul, it's been said before, I'm sure you've heard this, and a lot of our fellow artists here will agree, that the first album takes years to make. You know, not necessarily the production parts of it, but just that we seem to walk around with all these songs in our head for ages, for years. And uh, if you're lucky enough, maybe you have a band and you've been playing all these songs for a long time out there until it finally comes time to record the record. Was um, who, why, where, what? Kind of like that for you? Yeah, uh, that's a strange one with PMAD because uh, I suppose it's a 20-year project or maybe less, more, I'm not too sure. Uh, it's bits and pieces of jigsaws of decades and of uh, influences over different time. See, different bands, I suppose, being in the bands, the return of the, the suicidal duffel coats and Star of the Barber, the return of the suicidal duffel coats, currently with the greeting and hoping, trying to get that out. Uh, so I suppose PMAD is, um, yeah, and who, why, where, what, the album has been going around in my head for years and years and it never was going to happen. It was never going to happen. It was just, thank, I suppose, a pandemic is the, the reason why uh, PMAD is, is, is there. Um, it gave time, which uh, I should have we're all rushing around in our lives trying to uh, just live. And uh, God, we have to stop and think and tidy up places and declutter and whatever you got, got you through the, the tough times. And uh, music and the bits and pieces was mine. And uh, in those 20 years or more, the technology has moved on so much, so much that... Um, I could piece together uh, things, bass lines, guitar riffs, drums, lyrics. So uh, it, it's strange, I suppose, over the years. Uh, I was journaling, uh, writing lyrics and, and, and texting lyrics to myself and doing different things like that. And I never knew I was doing such a thing as mindfulness or journaling. It was just that's how I got through life. Uh, if I seen something that inspired me or in, I respected or thought that was important to me, I would write it down or something that clicked and said, gee, that'd make a good chorus or that'd make a good guitar riff or that's a good bass line. And uh, so that's why I suppose maybe so much of the um, different influences maybe come across. See, we've never played live. Liam and myself, all right, we got together and we made it interesting. I think we had great fun uh, piecing together medicine and bits and pieces to see could we do it. And I, I think we can put on a great show. Uh, but 
that wasn't the, the way it was for, for years and years uh, when it comes to record. Uh, it was just blessed record, strangely enough. It didn't have that uh, hanging over our heads, uh, wondering, God, that's not as good live as, as as it is in the studio, or it's not as good in the studio, or good in the studio as it is live. So, uh, yeah, so I didn't have any of those that baggage. So tell us about the uh, production aspects of the record, Paul. It looks like you had some collaborators around the world: Zeta Cube Records in Ireland, Protonaut Studio in Germany, and the record was mastered by Elith Mastering in uh, Mexico. And at no time were any of you guys all in the same room together. Sounds pretty challenging, but I'd say exciting at the same time. Yeah, um, everything is exciting to me. <laughs> it's also new, the process, the bits and pieces. When you're dealing with experts like uh, Liam uh, in, the, I suppose, Zeta Cube uh, Records is myself and Liam. Uh, just the name. When people, when you're putting into DistroKid or CD Baby or whoever you're releasing your music through, uh, they just ask you a record label and, God, we, we thought about it and it's mostly we have a record label it'll be releasing the greeting music as well and things so um, maybe it will become a, a wonderful record label uh, then you have Dominic in Protonos studio in Germany an absolute legend uh, you know the demos that get sent and then we record and he, he goes through it pieces it together it puts the timing into it and everything I wouldn't not my most spectacular trait, ideas man, I suppose, and put it together the vocals, re record, and it doesn't go through too many versions, really. He He's so good. He's just a wonderful. So, if you want, he's very busy, and I'm very blessed to have met Dominic. And uh, then we have uh, Pepe in uh, Eli's Mastering Labs. Uh, yeah, so he's in Mexico. Dominic's in uh, Germany. I'm Poor Tom, I can't go away. Uh, Liam is in Shannon, Ireland. Uh, so we're, we're not nowhere near. Look at when you're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean in Ireland, things have to be done a little bit differently anyway, if you're fine recording music and stuff like that. But getting it out to the world, if you're looking over to, to Canada, America, over to Indonesia, down to South Africa, Finland, all around Europe. It's amazing. So the world, that's what I was saying earlier there, but the, the technology has it, changed. It's just made things so much different, so much e easier, uh, I suppose, that um, it creates its own problems in time uh, with so much music to me. Um, yes, it's wonderful that people are putting out so much music, so it's hard to get over the, the noise, the, the, the amount of music that's being released. But yeah, the... The collaborators, it's just wonderful. Look at Liam is a genius. Dominic's a genius. Pepe is a genius. They're wonderful at what to do. I, I, I'm good at delegating, I suppose. Um, I know what I can do. And I'm not great at a lot of things. I'm good at things. Not great at a lot of things. But that's us all. And to know when to step back and put your trust in other people, I think, is a good trait. Uh, I, I, I could spend my time learning and doing all these things and not get any better. Sometimes, you know, you just won't be a good driver. Sometimes you won't be a great snooker player. Sometimes you won't, no matter how hard you practice at it. And uh, that's sort of me. So we go along and Liam will give you the heads up and say, no, he'll hear things. Oh, his hearing is unbelievable. And Dominic creates. And uh, Eli, or Pepe and Eli just pieces it all together and brings out the sound, just brings out that, Boom, uh, that bass line, that drum, that, that the guitar in that spot that you wanted. And that's what you need. And uh, I find um, and being on so many shows, luckily enough, first, and thank you all very much for having us on the shows, is that you um, hear a lot of new music and you would say, geez, that's a great song. It's a pity they didn't put a little bit more into the production. And, and, that's that's what knocks a lot of stuff. You can have the best song in the world and get lucky, but generally, um, the best song in the world, unless it's produced well and mixed and mastered well, and I find that, and you know all that, all about that, Michael, because you just dead at it, you know, and and that's your skills. Absolutely, making great music and mixing and mastering it and production, you're just all around brilliant, you know. But you collaborate with so many people as well, so not only is it help your production helps the songs and it, the, the final product is a better thing for dealing with people but you must trust them and uh, just uh, for me uh, uh, they want perfection 
I understand nothing can be per- perfect. So that's that's another thing I have. That's one of my good traits is look, at nothing can be perfect. Get it out there. And uh, look, at, we can remaster it in 20 years time. That'll be, <laughs> we'll worry about that then. P-Mad's latest single off the record. It's called Sisters, and according to the release EPK, it's your take on those we love gone too soon. They don't go away very far. They walk beside us every day, having left such an impression on us. They are still loved, still missed, and a very important influence on our lives. If it's okay to ask you, Paul, um, did the song arise from your own personal experiences? 
of course it's okay. God, you can ask me anything. And uh, I'm a fairly open book. There's no problem. I'm not uh, scared of talking about it too much. Um, I keep personal things. Yeah, I'm trying to keep family and things out of it. PMAD is a, is a project and it is what it is. But yeah, the, the, the songs, they're out there in the public. So yeah, look, at, it's about basically, it, it could be called brothers, mothers, fathers, cousins, sisters, friends. It ends up being called sisters because it, ju- it just related to uh, my sister who uh, died at 42, who just dropped it. And uh, flying one day... Uh, chatting and laughing and five minutes later, ten minutes later, she's uh, dead on the floor. Um, so, look at, there isn't a house in the world. My father died very young as well. Uh, and uh, we don't hang around messing a lot of the time in our family. <laughs> it's just, uh, uh, bang, gone. And uh, it, it's, it's like I said, and I suppose in the lyrics and the rest, it's hard on those left behind. It, it's great for the, the person that actually they have no pain, no nothing, and uh, they're gone. But um, yeah, so it ended up technically about my sister, but it could be about your sister, anyone's mother, father, cousins, friends, that influenced you. And when you think back and when you look out the gate or the door and you say, Jenny, something just reminds you of them or you're expecting, something just turns and you forget that they're gone. And uh, they are gone, unfortunately, but they've left that mark. And I wouldn't be as much as a goth as I am. Graveyards aren't overly, overly my thing. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, I feel my father and my and my sister and cousins and uncles and aunts and grandparents in different places, in different things, and that remind me of them. And in in, in their attitude and how I treat things, Kira was brilliant. So Kira was my sister, and uh, she, she was brilliant. She never, uh, yes, I probably did, but she didn't put it out. She didn't see bad in people, uh, you know, and there is, you know, we're all, we're all good, bad and different and that sort of thing. We can have our moods and things, but she always, you know, so, and I've seen her get hit by different people. And uh, she said, why didn't you give that hell back? Why didn't you give it to her? Uh, you know, I said, ah, well, look at, you don't know what that person has gone through in their, in their lives and things like that. So uh, how they're affected today, you know, so that I feel that myself when, when, I'm getting my eating or there's someone that I'm not getting on with at the moment and it's just like let it go it's not worth it um don't know how they're getting on and they have their own problems you know bullies have their own problems and all these sorts of things so yeah it's about loss but it's about uh the upbeat at what, what they left with you the 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 feelings the the impression how they made you a better person. So your parents do that. They try educating you and your family, your sisters and your brothers and your, your good friends. Bad friends will always be there, but good friends. And you'll miss them, people that you'll miss. Um, if you're a millionaire, you'll have lots of friends tomorrow. But who will actually be your friends when you're broke, you know? And them are the ones that will pick you up. But they influence you and uh, I suppose they believe in you. Uh, they bring you along. They were the ones to believe in you, you know, and it's, uh, um, they had their devils and their demons and yeah, so it, look at, not to be a downbeat about it, 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 it's, it's a good thing uh, that they were in your lives and that's why you're remembering them and the effect they had on you and, uh, I always think it's good to reflect and the Irish are great at death, I think, and we have All Souls Day and we have uh, All Saints Day and things like that and and remembering the dead and uh, what they do for you and uh, don't forget them. That's your memory of them and don't let them die away. That's the heaven and the peace that you give them is that they, uh, they were someone, they are someone to you and someone important and uh, it makes you feel better. It makes me feel better. It makes, you know, it, lessen it won't lessen the pain the loss and things like that but uh the impression they made on you and uh, that's what it's all about um and hopefully i leave some impression on someone <laughs> when i go that's it they'll say jimmy wasn't so bad John. So tonight on the Fish Mix, we've been chatting with PMAD over in County Galway, Ireland. And PMAD, of course, is celebrating the release of his debut album yesterday, Who, Why, Where, What. PMAD, it's a brilliant piece of work. 
Uh, congratulations, my friend. And everybody, go get it. Go download it. Go stream it. So I just want to say as well that, um, PMAD, you know, ever since I first heard your music, um, I felt a strange kind of connection to it. Uh, hard to explain, but then I started to think about it. And then in light of the uh, conversation that we've been having and your inspiration for the song, Sisters, uh, you know, some stuff kind of hit home. Because um, I too lost my sister in 2016, my sister Erin. She was 54 at the time. She was having a phone conversation with a friend back east and she dropped dead of a heart attack. Boom, she was gone. And then about four months later, my dad passed away uh, due to cancer. He was 82, uh, you know, a long life, but we weren't expecting to lose him in 2017. So, but there it is. And uh, not to mention the music. I mean, we, we, we kind of have the same sort of influences. I listened to a lot of the Smiths back in the day, uh, Depeche Mode, a lot of the new wave stuff. And it's kind of funny because over the years I've played in a lot of bands and I've never actually played in a band that played any of that kind of stuff. Even though I had the purple spikely, uh, spikely. Somebody used to call me Spikel, Michael the Spikel, spiky hair. Um, and also, not to mention the fact that we um, share some geographic uh, connections as well, too. I'm first generation Canadian. My family is from Ireland. My, my mom and dad emigrated uh, to Canada in 1957, and I still have tons of uh, relatives and family over in Ireland that I haven't seen since I was seven years old, I think. So there you have it. Anyways, all that being said, once again, PMAD, congratulations on a great piece of work. The album is fantastic. We're going to come back and uh, speak a little more with PMAD uh, in a later segment. But now we're going to play a few tunes from other artists on Mixposure.com on the Fish Mix.
into silent mode. Curiosity may not always kill the cat. Best not scratch beyond your road the hell of the workhouse. Tearing flesh in a satanic mill we cannot stand the sound of church bells. They make us feel ill. Did you ever see a shadow out of the corner of your eye? Then it's gone did you think it's just your imagination? Well you might be wrong mankind looks to the heavens, but they are looking the wrong way they cannot see the jagged circle on any given day. Sometimes people say they love us, that makes us switch to silent mode. Curiosity may be entertaining, best to leave it at that there are worlds without a moon. Worlds you will never see trains that are invisible, there are more than the Zanetti. Did you ever see a shadow out of the corner of your eye? Then it's gone did you think it's just your imagination? Well you might be wrong mankind looks to the heavens, but they are looking the wrong way they cannot see the jagged circle on any given day. Zanetti sometimes you can see it sometimes you cannot Zanetti already there yet it is still on its way to Mexico. Zanetti wheel men in black off the track to put the record straight they were not trying to enter Zanetti wheel men in black off the track they left to gift outside the gates. Sometimes people ask us questions that make us switch to silent mode. Curiosity may not always kill the cat. Best not scratch beyond your road the hell of the workhouse. Tearing flesh in a satanic mill we cannot stand the sound of church bells. They make us feel ill. Did you ever see a shadow out of the corner of your eye? Then it's gone did you think it's just your imagination? Well you might be wrong mankind looks to the heavens. But they are looking the wrong way they cannot see the jagged circle on any given day. Sometimes people say they love us, that makes us switch to silent mode. Curiosity may be entertaining, best to leave it that there are worlds without a moon. Worlds you will never see trains that are invisible, there are more than the Zanetti. Did you ever see a shadow out of the corner of your eye? Then it's gone did you think it's just your imagination? Well you might be wrong mankind looks to the heavens, but they are looking the wrong way they cannot see the jagged circle on any given day. Zanetti sometimes you can see it sometimes you cannot Zanetti already there yet it is still on its way to Mexico. Zanetti real men in black off the track to put the record straight they were not trying to enter Zanetti real men in black off the track they left to gift outside the gates.
ocean high Do you see me? With your nightmare
So let's dive a little bit uh, deeper into the uh, lyrics of the songs. Very important, uh, I'm sure. Um, the music, to me, it, anyways, for one, it kind of has a darker tone to it, and I personally dig that. The darker, the better. But um, it also seems to me that, um, you know, lyrically, I hear some kind of hopefulness, some inspiration, um, and that makes for, um, you know, an interesting contrast. Where do you get the inspiration for your lyrics? Um, is there a message that you're trying to send? And of course, it begs the question that we all want to know. Do you write the music or the lyrics first? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I suppose lyrics have been written for years and they get written on the day and music has been written for years and they get written on the day. It's uh, like I said, the technology has come on and uh, it's about piecing it all together. Uh, so I have tons and tons of lyrics and I add tons and tons of lyrics uh, for each song uh, pages and pages and the thing is to when you get in and actually try and record it and uh, you put it all together and you want the song to breathe then as well with music so I have to cut so much lyrics from the song uh, that you know it's hard to know uh, as you look at like I said nothing is perfect so them are the joys. It is the way it is, and you get uh, the wonderful critics, uh, and there's not too many of them out there. Uh, that's you know, it just doesn't suit them. And that's fine too. It doesn't worry me. P mad isn't for everyone. So uh, yeah, as you say, then it's a uh, darker tone, and you have people coming up and saying, "Jeez, what sort of music are you playing?" You know, it's because uh, it's not country and western, and it's not uh, poppy, and it's. Uh, it is what it is. It's PMAD and it creates and it's it, it takes, it creates. It's so lyrically then, yeah, I don't know, are they? It's to me, it's sure look at we're all really trying to strive to learn and, and, and change things and ourselves and no matter how much you change, you're still yourself, you know, no matter what you do. You, maybe I'm too old to change now, but I'm not. I don't believe. Uh, so, yeah, the the music both come first. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd have the music and then music basically comes first and then I'll try and piece in the, the lyrics to suit and, you know, the way you get extended, shorten the sentence, yeah, all the bits and pieces. But I do like a song that has meaning. That's the main thing to me. Um, the music is great. Now, granted, and I've been singing songs for years, you know, the way you have, uh, I believe they were the lyrics for it. And they're totally not the lyrics. <laughs> so you're, you're you're singing that song all your life and then you actually read the lyrics and you say, oh, jeez, I wasn't singing that at all. That song means absolutely nothing now or it means more to me now than it did, you know. So, uh, you know, the roof's on fire, I ain't or I, you know, so it's, it's yeah, the lyrics do mean a lot to me uh, as in, I think, a song. To me, all the good songs in the world are like the Smiths and the Cure and uh, uh, Suicidal Tendencies, Tom Waits, uh, Dede. They're all saying something, and it's not just trivial. Uh, you might notice none of my songs ever mention the word love because that's a we're striving, and we either have it, or we don't. It's it's you know it's nothing to do with me. Uh, it's not a change. We all love things and we all hate things. I don't mention any of those words. Um, it, it, it's it's about feeling, and if you love something, that's brilliant. And if you hate something, just stay away from it. So it's it's um yeah, I I do like a thing to to mean, and uh, I don't know what it means. It means it to me, uh, but it'll mean completely something completely different to someone else. What are you saying in the song? It's a bit like who am I and I like a good video as well as much as anything else. So when you be putting the uh, video together and all the other bits and pieces, you um yeah I have one meaning in the song, I believe, and then I have put another meaning into the video and uh, like who am I? As you mentioned earlier on, it, it, to me it's, you know, am I a survivor? Am I going to uh get through this, who am I, what do I want to be, where am I going, and all the other bits and pieces. I had a plan, you have a plan, so what? Um, plans change. Where in the video, it's uh, a bit more, I wanted to make it, uh, it's a crime drama, where the uh, coroner and the, the post-mortem has been done, and and then you see uh, 
stalker and then the other one uh, you know chasing him with a baseball bat and then there's the clown and the gun but actually in the reality who is the one in the postmortem for me it's the clown it's the stalker it's the uh, guy with the baseball bat they're the ones in the pot I survive the girl survives whoever it is we're strong enough to get over this no matter what it is and it's uh, our internal battles did it all start for PMAD? And uh, I know you've uh, touched on some of your musical influences already, but let's talk about a few more of those. Yeah, musical upbringing. Um, yeah, we had a big, wonderful record player in our house. And uh, my fa- my parents wouldn't have been huge music fans. They liked music, you know, but wouldn't be. We'd say um, we'd have records from Larry Cunningham, Big Tom. My father would be uh, like the country and western, but then there was uh, the Carpenters and Buddy Holly, Roy Orbison, and I loved sticking on the records. And it was just a, to hear a song that you never heard before. That was amazing when you were a kid, you know. Just the radio and TV wasn't as much, you know, as as people say back in the day. You know, people have found music back in the day. We're miracle workers, and anyone that introduced you to music, new music and good music, uh, was unbelievable. And every new sound you heard influenced you, you know. So you go around to the cousins' houses and they had record players, and uh, 
and James would put on the status quo and they, let, they had all their leather jackets and they were all older than me and they were or not leather jackets they were denim jackets and they were rockers and um, status quo was big at the time and Jenny sure they you know they were cool to me and then another cousin came along and it was Genesis and and I was still only nine or ten or whatever it is not even and that was what they were into and then you know it must have been the spiky hair or something because over the years ended up, my first album would have been Howard Jones and Human Lib and uh, it was just my it was my first concert as well I actually spent my own money on buying the album and going to the concerts with a friend Declan and Declan Scott and we, we had the beret and the hair and up and a child only a young lad there 10, 11, 12 or whatever it was at the time and then on and everybody you meet then Mike Farrell went to the Gwail Talk and it's the Irish well, let's go to learn Irish in, in Ireland in time uh, back in the day and still do um, and he came back and there's a light that never goes out with the Smiths and geez that sent me off in another direction and that was amazing the Smiths and then they they flashed and disappeared of a shot and then you were onto the cure and then yeah, I, I love the Hot 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 album and Disintegration. And, wow, it just blew me away. And then you had other people influence you. And then you, you found your own thing. And I was dead there. Uh, Matt Johnson, I just, wow, just wonderful stuff. Dinosaur Jr., A House in Ireland, the great, one of the greatest Irish bands ever. Uh, then you had friends bringing you to Fugazi and, um, you, you know, Mad stuff, mad stuff, and then you found your own way. And major, so my influences <laughs> varied from Tom Waits to to Public Enemy, um, from a house to uh, the wedding present, a strange this the sisters of mercy, and I just love music. But now I'm picky. Uh, you know, we all like what we like, and uh, but. I'm not a pop fan, but then certain pop songs, you say, geez, why do I like that? But it's, it's got its own. Every song or every tune or every artist that went out there and made something, put their heart and soul into it, whether it's big fin big finance that covers it and it wants to be whatever it is, or it's the likes of me and the mini budgets and just trying to create what you create and hopefully get a good sound. But everyone's putting their heart and soul into it, you know, and, and this is whether they want to be a star or just have a good sound. But everyone wants it good and everyone thinks it's good and everything is brilliant. How do you manage all the, uh, how do you manage the promotional aspect of your music? Are you uh, the one man show or do you have some help, help on the promotional and marketing side? Yeah, the, the promotional side, the, the music seems to be nearly the easy part. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. And uh, it's head wrecking and you want to get it right. But PMAT is for me. And if I enjoy it, then hopefully some other person in some corner of a rainforest might like it as well. So um, that that part of it. But I see the the job side, and I was saying about dividing and trusting and, and things like that. Uh what I've seen is uh, so much, and probably you've noticed, and lots of other people, there seems to be more people making money out of m your music and the artist than there is, than the artist actually is, you know. So I'll promo this and we'll promo that and we'll do all the bits and pieces. And I have a plan in my head and I'm not sure how good or bad it is. It's, it's going okay for the moment, uh, you know. Uh, as, as people are saying, uh, God, you're everywhere. You're 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 on every radio station. Well, that's because I'm telling you. You know, I'm putting it out there. And there's Excel sheets. I love Excel. Uh, I I'm not afraid to admit it. I love Excel. Right. So it gives me. A, I have three, four different columns and uh, my comments on each one and things like that. So who who is playing my music? Who isn't? Who who I'd like to play my music? I, I want everyone to play it. Doesn't matter who you are. If you're RTE, BBC, or NBC, whatever it is, play it. Uh, I'd be only delighted. And if it's uh, any show, uh, everyone has the right to hear it. And uh, so, yeah, I've put my 50 quids here and 50 quids there and learned the hard way that um, very few of them, uh, it, you know, they're not doing the work. I, I'm a firm believer when I was growing up and I was taught, never pay for something you can, uh, never pay for something you can get for nothing. So, uh, time and effort and uh, your own skills and things like that. That's that's my you know nothing. It's 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 time and it's all the bits and pieces. But 
what I've tried to do is make an extensive list and get on social media. I find it's the modern way. Not everyone is on it. You won't get to everyone. But those people hopefully will be <clears throat> visiting band camp and doing different things like that and finding new music or chatting to someone that'll say, Jesus, have you heard this? And, you know, and like I said earlier, they're your friends influencing you and your music and stuff like that. So that part, yeah. So the promotional side is is basically me. Um, I've, like I said, there's one or two that I would recommend and about 50 that you wouldn't and all the emails, we will do this for you and we will do that for you. Uh, no one will do it like yourself, really. But it's work. It's hard work. Uh, it takes up a lot of time. You won't be sweating, but... It takes organisation and lucky enough I have that m- compartment in my head that I'm able to uh, get all together and follow and the one thing about doing it yourself and things like that is I, I was raised to say please and thank you and the uh, most important thing I'm finding is thank you. You know, it's very important and uh, to thank you Michael for having me on the show and all the plays you give PMAD and what you get in return, I don't know. Um, hopefully, I, I, I try to share animal souls and things like that in my own little way. And <laughs> it's, so the social media side of it is, is, is yeah, active on it. But it's, why you see me there is people play the music and I'm trying to thank them. And uh, the promotional side, I find, it, look, I'm delighted to get the plays and the rest of it. And I hate when I miss a, uh, you know, a thank you. Sometimes uh, it's a victim of your own success. Sometimes you have so many followers now and there's so much stuff coming through that you actually miss the notification that you were tagged or sometimes Facebook isn't perfect in uh, tagging you always and letting you know that you were tagged. <clears throat> so the most important thing is me active in social media is a thank you to those shows that are playing. So I try to share and put a message in, you know, share a mix. Uh, fish mix and uh, get that out there and let other artists and we're sort of all chasing each other um, I follow artists and see where they're getting played and building my database other artists are saying jeez if they'll play PMAD uh, they'll surely play my stuff so they're all following around and emailing and sending off to these radio stations that are playing PMAD and I'd love to support you know so I, I if you're sharing and I'm sharing and we're all sharing. We're getting it out there. And look, at I, I got eight, uh, not eight, but I got given out of a sort a, a little when I put up a post on Instagram there around on social media just to say, you know, you, the things you can do to support the artist for free. You, know, you would see me as you want to. Life sees me as they want to. I am a boy, I am a girl. Saving me, be with me, saving me, be with me, I am a straight boy and I want it, I am a gay boy and I want it, I am a girl and I want it, I am a gay girl and I want it, I live my life. See me I 
Track number eight off PMAD's uh, recent debut album release, Who, Why, Where, What. That song is called I Am, which seems to answer the question, who am I? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Anyways, um, so what's up next for you, PMAD? Are there any uh, plans for more recording? Um, what about live shows? you going to put a band together and take this out on the road? Yeah, what's up for PMAT? Um, yeah, we get this album out. The, the plan has been to release singles, get the EP out, and then release the album, and it's all a build. And um, yeah, it was 8 million people or whatever, 8 billion people on the planet was mentioned last week or something like that. So uh, unfortunately, there is a, um, a lot of those 8 billion have not heard PMAT. So uh, the one criticism I have heard of the album is... Uh, I know all the tunes, really. There's only two or three that I haven't heard, you know. Uh, so it's a victim of his own success for the few people that have heard of PMAD. So there's a few more of the 8 billion to hear PMAD. So everything will be new to them. So if we can hit a few more people up with uh, who, why, where, what, and they get onto who am I and broken and medicine except me and sisters, youth, and... Uh, I am, you know, th this horror, this is what it's all about, you know, so it, it's it's a slow process. It's on nearly on one year, 3rd of December 2021 was when uh, Who Am I was officially released. So in within a year, I think go from zero to 100 is absolutely amazing. Um, So where to next? Yeah. I spent last summer actually recording the new album and just finishing off. Uh, the new album, I think I it I in power, I think will be the the name of the new album. And uh, just finishing off the master, the last track actually missing, is being uh, mixed and produced now. Uh, well, being produced and we'll mix it now in the next couple of weeks. Then, and eight new tracks for 2023, 2024, depending on how 2022 finishes off with <laughs> who, why, where, what. Um. <clears throat> so most things in life uh, to do with music or anything, no more than yourselves and all these brilliant artists out there, it's decided by other people. So I can only create the music, we create the music, and uh, if people enjoy it, we'll be asked, we've been asked to do gigs, we've been asked to go on different things around the place, do more live recordings and all the other bits and pieces. Um, but we've been busy, uh, everyone's been busy since uh, we got back out of lockdown, so we're all doing other things in lives and things like that, but the plan is, we know Liam and myself and uh, James and uh, Paul and, and uh, the few other lads, you know, we, we can put a band together, the greeting, and uh, we can do it for PMAD, and the whole thing is if we're going to be on a stage, we're going to give a good show, and we just want to take time to create that. Your uh, new album Who, Why, Where, What? is insanely good uh the music the production the whole the whole bit is just a, a brilliant piece of work congratulations once more listen do you have any uh, words of wisdom or advice for indie artists out there and um uh, maybe a few last words for our audience and before you go why don't you tell our listeners how they can go get your album where do they go and how do they learn more about pmad i think they want to know yeah uh <laughs> First main thing is to say a major, major thank you to you, Michael, uh, the Fish Mix and MixExposure.com for uh, having me on. Uh, look, at PMAT is nothing. It's, it, look, it is for me, uh, but it, it's getting out nowhere in the world without uh, without you and without other shows, the fantastic shows. And, and most people, volunteers, you know, fair enough, if you're a big well paid DJs and the rest of it still have a lot of hard work to do whether you're uh, getting nothing and doing it for love or getting paid look at it, it depends on the orders you're, you're you're taking you know did most of the music the big paid guys like 
I suppose, is uh, they're playing music that wouldn't be necessarily their music because they've given a list and this is where I suppose hopefully hopefully you're playing playing it because you 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 love it and uh, or you like a little bit of p pads and things like that so yeah it, it's it, the main thing is thank you for having me you know uh, after that in the artist what words of advice uh, and the audience uh, advice to art in the artist is just do it get up technology is there get on to people I would say get it well produced and well mixed makes a big difference and it's amazing I know it's cost and things like that but if, if it's down to cost it's no more than me spending my money and time on social media and that's my skills or whatever it is or Excel you have your own skills and uh, learn a little bit more about the production and the mixing side of it or whatever it is but get it out there get it out there and uh, nothing will be perfect you can go back and re-release and you'll find that the some of the biggest bands in the world they came out with three singles weren't found till the fourth one and then came back and re-released or reproduced and remastered uh, the original three and then they became huge singles as well so that uh, history is full of all sorts you know so um look at a good tune is a good tune i suppose at the end of it but it really helps if it's produced and mixed well you know um for any to the audiences to Thank you all so much. You, you, everybody's been so kind. You know, uh, it's been an amazing journey uh, for a year, twelve months. Didn't expect it a year before that when you'd be sitting down and, and pulling your hair out and saying, "Well, that matched that and that song." And how do I finish broken? And oh Lord, what will people think? And ah, who cares anymore? You know, what do people think? Sure, they'll think what they think. They like it or they won't like it. You get the album, yeah. So it comes out on the 29th of November, so Tuesday. Someone was laughing at it earlier on that uh, it's an Irish thing, is it, to come out on a Tuesday? Is it not all everything, everything released on a Friday? See, everything is released on a Friday and PMAD isn't the same. Tuesday, people have. It's before Wednesday and it's after Monday, so maybe people might. Uh, payday could be on Thursday though. But look at PMAD isn't just for Christmas. PMAD is here all the time. So you can get uh, t- PMAD is on all the, uh, I like my videos, I put a lot of effort and work into them. So you can go to PMAD the band, that's mostly where you'll find us, PMAD the band. If you search that in Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, da da da, all the other bits and pieces, Bandcamp. So you're looking at PMAD. Uh, in uh, on Bandcamp, that's where you buy the album, so you can download it from Bandcamp. So it's pmad.bandcamp.com. But if you put in pmad, there's not too many pmads in there. And or even uh, who, why, where, what? It should come up in the search engine, and that's the name of the album. And it's eight tracks with five uh, remixes and extended versions and different things like that. Uh, all original music, all pmad, and um, hopefully you like it. Thank you very much indeed for having me. Uh, I love chatting with you always do we must do it again keep up the wonderful work and people get on to Animal Souls as well what a band what a band fantastic so Michael Animal Souls just putting out the most amazing music so get on to them and celebrate them and uh, share Animal Souls and all the other brilliant bands out there that you think are brilliant because we all have different opinions so thank you very much and uh Hope you enjoy the album. Watching the world go 
looking away I listened as you plead that hatred was the feed blind eyes and twisted face
all you mixolodians that are left what a show that was tonight i had such a blast putting that interview with uh, pmad together hope you guys enjoyed it i thought it was a great conversation at least uh, one side of the conversation was good uh, pmad had a lot of great things to talk about about his album his music his background what's coming up next it's all good so PMAD released his uh, debut album yesterday, Who, Why, Where, What. It's available on Bandcamp. I'll post the link again if you need it. You guys should go check it out. It's really good stuff. We had some new music tonight. Oh, before I go, uh, PMAD, uh, who, we, who we were talking about, is actually the Mixposure Art of the, Artist of the Month for December. <laughs> and I played a track from a new band from Switzerland called Isamania with uh, Back to Life. Um, that song is the song of the month on Exposure for the month of December. Anyway, hope you guys had a great time tonight. Um, I'm off next week. There's no fish mix next week. I'm doing a uh, helping out with a benefit show where Darby Mills, um, the same Darby Mills of the Headpins, is uh, doing a benefit next Wednesday. So I'm going to be there helping out. So tune back in. I guess that would be the 13th, December 13th. I'll be back. So we've got a couple more songs for you here. We played uh, an earlier one from Katja T in Finland. We're going back to Finland to finish the night. <coughs> Pardon the pun, finish the night. Hi D with this masquerade and Hi SQ with why is there a nev sorry, why is there never a pontoon plane when you need one. There you go. All right, here we go. Good night, folks. Two more to go and we're done.
Okay, that's it, folks. Go home. <laughs> Had a lot of fun tonight. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for sticking around till the very end. That was a uh, big show. I uh, looked at the uh, timer in my SAM broadcasting app, and it said two hours and 45 minutes. So that's pretty close. We, we, I think we hit the mark pretty good. Thanks for joining. Uh, again, I'm off next week. So we'll see you back here on Wednesday, December 13th. Have a good one.